Hey guys, what's up? This is Michael from Club Yokai, and today I'm going to be breaking down our beat for Kabwasa's Dreamer featuring Ioni. So for this one, I'm actually just going to be going over the vocals. Um, the project file won't open because I've been using some outdated uh, VSTs and plugins. Ableton has a fun thing where if you upgrade the software but don't upgrade the plugins, it causes a lot of issues with opening it. So I spent like 20 minutes trying to opening it, trying to open it, and uh, just decided that the vocals are probably more interesting. Mostly because the beat's pretty simple. So yeah, I'm going to break into it real quick. So right here, uh, as you can see, for this track in particular, we're only using around, I guess we're only using 23 vocals tracks which ends up being like 19 uh, the majority of them are coming from Ioni uh, mostly because she's a singer and because she sent us a bunch of layers um, as you can probably see right here stacks on stacks of vocals um, that were definitely a hard time to retune and pitch for everything especially with the timing issues so I'll break into that in a little bit um, but for Kawasa it's pretty simple we just have his main vocal right here as well as um, his doubles they're just a preview right here I'm gonna mute everything um, and just have the vocals play so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you see me shine, yeah. I've been swimming, thinking about dry land. Damn it, for said the world was mine, huh? yeah. I've been in a tough spot, damn. So yeah, for Kabasa, we're pretty much using the same rack we used for the In My Head vocals. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out on one of our pages. In addition to that, I forgot to go over this in the last video, but we also run pretty much all of our vocals through the same rack for just like the group chain. Usually this is called like a submix. You'll send you to all the vocals to a submix and then put effects on that mix essentially. But we do it like this just because Ableton has groups and it's a little bit faster. So as you can see right here, you're just running it through a utility. This basically gives us the ability to automate volume. Um, this is something I started doing recently that I haven't really been doing in the past. This is a really good way to edit out any like Explosives or any other form of noise instead of you know deleting the audio which I usually do here You can just like drop this to negative 35 or just like you know mute the clip It's a lot easier and faster to do it that way in addition to that We have two DSers one for the 4k and one for the 5k range. It's a little bit overkill um, But that's the ranges I really find to be the most problematic in addition to that We have a glue compressor just kind of squashing all the layers together you can see right here It's really just catching the peaks to be honest Next, we have a mid-side EQ, a ping pong delay for some reason. It's it's deactivated, so I really don't know why that's there. But as you can see, we're doing some small cuts down here and a little bit of boosting um, in the breathy area. Finally, we have a fab filter just with a preset that I adjusted. Pretty much doing the exact same thing, taking out some of that, you know, harsh frequencies, giving it some more air, and also just hard cutting for the bass sections as well. And finally, a small trick that I learned from one of my uh, classes at USC. Um, but using vitamin as a, what's the word, as an, an unimager, I guess that's the correct term. But basically what you, you do is you use it as a multiband uh, compressor, but you bring the sides in based on every additional band. So what that means is that the higher bands are being panned slightly more to the center um, at the higher frequency. Uh, basically, this, this is a good way to kind of bring a vocal back to the center if you've done a lot of hard panning. It's a good thing to do at the very end of your chain just because it kind of brings everything together at once. Pretty much use it for all of our vocal chains as of now. And then finally some side chain compression um, for the kick, which is triggered over here. So that's pretty much what we did for Kawasa's vocals. Um, there's nothing too crazy going on. I mean, there's a little bit of like hard pitching. Luckily for the, I think doubles, it doesn't really matter. We can crank it through auto-tune because it's not um, an issue. Uh, the reason why this one's repitched as well, though, is because the autotune either fixed the note in the wrong way or made another error. Uh, so we're kind of, you know, pushing it closer so the autotune won't make a mistake. So yeah, this is Kapasa's vocals, as I said before. Not too much going on. I'm going to go to Ioni's vocals now, which are doing some crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So this main vocal, I don't know why that's muted, so we're going to ignore it. Oh, this is the chorus. Okay, so for Ioni, we ended up having to freeze and flatten a lot of stuff. I believe a lot of stuff is frozen right now. There was a weird glitch with the little, alt little Alto Boy where if you basically exported anything with it on and added, added automation, it would turn off the automation or mess it up, essentially. Uh, so that's why everything's frozen. Um, I'm going to solo those tracks in a second so you can hear those. Uh, but as you can probably tell by my great naming conventions, we have basically three harms, a double and main vocal times two. So you can probably tell there's a lot going on with this track just in terms of layering, which is good. You know, obviously, yeah, if you want a certain sound, you need to layer it to high hell. Um, you know, the more layers, honestly, the better, as long as you know they're different pitch or you're trying to make some sort of chord or chant. 
Um, for this, we had to be very careful with how we were panning everything though, uh, just to make sure that what we were hard panning was either a vocal that had the same tone as the main vocal or just another vocal that was gonna get in the way of the main vocal. That's why we're kind of throwing it off to the side. Um, we're still there, um, but it's not getting in the way of the mix. So, so I'm gonna play just the harms uh, that are slightly panned right here. I'm going to add two more sets of harms. And then finally the last harms. And in addition to that, we have some doubles. So I'm also going to put those in context. You see me shine. So the reason why these doubles are hard panned uh, is because, at least for the first two choruses, I believe, we have Kabwasa's vocals just in the middle, and we kind of wanted to add some more space. So by hard panning these vocals, we give we basically make room for there to be a duet, um, but that was problematic because there's too much going on just in the middle and makes the mix very problematic and kind of hard to fix mainly because you have two main vocals going on at the same time. I think for the final version of the song, we ended up not having her main vocal in the center just because it led to too many issues mix-wise. So that's why we kind of have it, you know, off to the side. Um, I'm going to play her verse right now real quick as well. And there's a little bit less panning involved in it just because we didn't have as many uh, takes. I'm going to play it real quick for you guys. I've been very pensive, just came through my senses. I've been in the clouds because there's no cost of renting. I've been moving low key, don't know him, but he know me. Trying to change the world, ain't been herping, cut her floating. No, I can't do no meetings, I am tired of pretending. So obviously you can tell there's, you know, very sparse harms that are placed throughout just to add more texture. It's pretty much just the main vocal with the doubles, ear candy here and there. Uh, we did the same thing we did with Kapwasa's vocal in In My Head, the Wabi Vox type thing. Um, we're running through autotune and then doing some altar board pitching all solo right here for you guys. So this is what I mentioned kind of in the last video with the extreme uh, form and shifting. So in context, you can actually barely hear it, but it kind of adds a nice panned element to the track. So so it's kind of like an ad lib so yeah that's pretty much how we did our vocals i would say that the majority of the time was spent just re-timing them the main reason why we weren't too nitpicky with this is because again these are harmonies and they're not really going to be heard the main thing is as long as they start and as long as they end where the main vocal ends, it'll sound fine. And there's a lot of hard cutting, I believe, here. Um, we had to go back in a couple times just to adjust some of the layers. Um, but since they're in the background, you know, if they're off by a little bit, it doesn't really matter too much. So for those of you who are like trying to get better at comping vocals, I highly recommend just doing doubles initially. So how to do that is just get basically get the main vocal being the best out of all the takes you can, whether you're splicing you know, take one, take two, or take three together. Um, basically make it the best you can. And then from there, bring in all the other takes you didn't use and then align them on the grid. Uh, so basically we use this as a reference and then we force these doubles to be the exact same way. As you can tell right here, there's a lot of fading and cutting just to make sure that they come in and out at the same time. And everything thing you wanna make sure is that you're not including any breaths for the doubles. You know, no one wants to hear like another like random breath from their left or right ear. It's better just to have the main vocal have the breaths. Same goes for any like plosives or any like sibilance in the voice. That's like your S's, um, your ts, 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 any like mouth noise as well. You really want to edit the, those out of the doubles because just, just that's essentially just noise and it's not really adding anything. It's more of just a distraction. So it's better to just take it out. So it definitely takes patience and time to just make sure you're getting all those. So that's another thing uh, to keep in mind is that you can be super nitpicky, but for some things it really doesn't matter too much because not a lot of people are going to be paying that much attention uh, to something so small. So, so yeah, thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we're going to be covering, I believe there's two more songs, You Go and See and then Whole Lot of Love. I'm probably just going to do You Go and See, uh, but expect a new video soon. Basically, they come out as fast as I can edit them. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something new. And if you have any questions or concerns 
um, about production, feel free to email us or hit us up on Instagram. Uh, we're always checking our DMs for anyone who has a question. So yeah, thanks guys. Peace out.